Now, the second aspect of this, this numerical discretization uh, that we need to check is whether it is stable or not. As it turns out, when it is stable. All right, and this is a von Neumann stability analysis. And what the analysis is, is that we seek solutions of the numerical discretization in the form e to the i kx plus lambda t. And we try and find uh, the lambda that corresponds to any given k for all real k. And this is just like the dispersion relation for wave partial differential equations. It's just that instead of seeking a frequency omega, um, we're seeking being more general and just seeking any rate lambda instead of i omega. And the reason for looking at all real k is that over a large spatial domain, the solutions generally will wiggle in space, and so generally they'll be oscillating in space, but they could have any period. The question is what happens over all possible oscillations? Okay, now as it turns out, instead of seeking lambda, we usually seek uh, what's called the growth factor, uh, g, which is e to the lambda tau. And the reason for that is because u of x at time t l, given this solution here, is e to the i k x plus lambda TL, but the Lth time is E. Um, just time steps of tau, L time steps of tau. Now, this combination here is e to the IKX, E to the lambda tau L. And one of the things you know about exponentiation is this is the same thing as e to the lambda tau to the power l. In other words, this is the growth factor g times e to the i kx. And algebraically, it's easier to seek this g than the lambda, but it's not much different. OK, so now um, just substitute into the discretization and see how the growth factor depends upon this wave number k. And we do this in, by noting the following. So firstly, that uj of l plus 1 is what on this left-hand side? Well, it is uh, g to the l plus 1 e to the i k x j which is g times g to the l e to the i k x j, um, which is g times u at the point x j l and time t l. Uh, similarly, u j plus or minus 1 l is from here g to the l e to the i k x j plus or minus 1. But x j plus or minus 1 is just x j plus or minus h. So this is g to the l e to the i k x j plus or minus h. And then again we split this term. This is g to the l e to the i k xj plus or minus i k h, uh, which is g to the l e to the i k xj e to the plus or minus i k h. And again, we see there that's just uj. Yeah. Right, so this discretization can be written when we seek solutions um, of this form as ujl plus 1, so that's g ujl, is ujl on the right, plus s uj plus 1l 
is this in the plus case. So it's E to the plus I K H U J L minus two U J L plus U J minus one. So that's the minus case here. So it's E to the minus I K H U J L. Okay. Now this equation has to be satisfied for all U J L. So we can factor out the U J L and say, okay, the G on the left must be one plus S into E to the I K H minus two plus E to the minus I K H. And looking at that, I should you recall when you're doing some complex numbers, trigonometric, trigonometric stuff, that this combination of e to the i something plus e to the minus i something is two times the cosine of that something. So this is one plus s into two cosine kh minus two. And now, it's most convenient to recognise that this can be simplified using the double angle formula. It is that g is equal to 1 minus s times 4 sine squared kh on 2. All right, and this is our growth factor as a function of wave number k. Right, now, given this growth factor for the numerical scheme, what does it tell us? Well, the first thing to recognise is that from here, we need the growth factor to be of size less than 1. Because if mod g is bigger than 1, then in the solution u x of tl, which is this, we have g to the l will tend to infinity as l tends to infinity. And l tending to infinity means as time marches on. So that says the scheme is unstable and therefore unusable. The converse of this is if for all parameter s and parameter k we have mod g less than or equal to 1, then the scheme is stable because mod because g raised to the power l will always stay less than or equal to 1 and is and what it means is all components for that S will stay bounded and we can get good results. Okay, now in this scheme here, um, we have G is 1 minus S times 4 sine squared. And one of the things you know about sine squared is it has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So here, right, since sine squared is bigger than or equal to 0, that implies g is equal to 1 minus something, so g is less than or equal to 1. So that's good. However, it's mod g big, bigger than 1 that causes the problem. Um, so we also have to check when is g um, bigger than minus 1. When does it cross minus 1? All right, now. The most negative, right? Um, that G can be is when sine squared is equal to one, because sine has to be between zero and one, and so sine squared has a maximum of one. So the most negative G can be is. Um, is when g is equal to 1 minus s times 4 times sine squared being 1. Alright, how does that compare? Um, so for stability we want this to be bigger than or equal to one, minus 1. Um, 
uh, now rearrange, put the S on the other side and the minus 1 over this side, so that goes 2 has to be bigger than or equal to S times 4, divide by the 4 and we get S has to be less than or equal to a half. And this is for stability. So what it's saying is that's a constraint on the space-time step, right? Because S is k tau over h squared, has to be less than or equal to half, i.e. tau has to be less than or equal to h squared over 2k. All right, so that's, and provided that holds, the numerical scheme is stable. So that's great. Um, there is a range of time steps for any chosen h, space step, for which the scheme is useful. However, this is a very strong constraint and it, is too, it places too strong limitations on the time step to be practical. So our next challenge is to discuss a scheme uh, which is not so constrained in its space time step. <coughs>